Ah, don't you love Osu? A game where you aim on a circle, wait, press a key and repeat. What could be so fun about it? Well, other than the fact that you don't need to deal with RNG or incompetent teammates, and that it's a fully mechanical game with a lot of skill cap, the real reason I find it fun is because I like automating and making external scripts for games, and Osu is very good at that. So let me go over the basics real quick. People find a song, and then they sync a bunch of circles to the rhythm. Then it gets packed into a map, people download it and play it by hovering over the circles and pressing at the right time. I want something called a relaxed script. So basically that means that I only aim on top of circles and I don't also tap because the script is gonna do that for me. I'm gonna make a Python external script that doesn't touch memory in any way, so basically I can't really get the in-game data easily. I have to get creative with my approaches, otherwise the video would be very boring. So because I'm not using memory, my script has no idea what's happening on the screen or in the game itself, so how can it tap perfectly? Well for that I'm gonna need to find the map data of the circle positions and delays. Luckily for me, the map data is just stored on the PC every time a map is downloaded. Because I don't have memory access, getting the map could actually be really annoying, because I would have to scan this area and use image recognition to get the text and then search for it, or I would have to use a macro that will open the map in the browser and then copy the browser code to get the map ID. But then I discovered that the map name itself is in the also window when you play it, so I can just scan for the also window name and see whenever I get into a map, and then if I do, I can pull the name from it and then just look through my directory directories to find it. Once I have the map data, I just need to parse it so that I can get a bunch of important information and this is gonna be the main parser. It's gonna tell me things like the approach rate, which is how fast the circle appears, the circle size, the overall difficulty and all sorts of things. And most importantly, it's gonna tell me the delay between every circle. So basically when I need to tap. But the problem is that it only tells me the delay between circles, not when the first circle appears on screen. This means that even though the delays are correct, it's gonna be offset and they're not gonna be in sync. So what I need to do is scan for when the first hit object appears so I can sync everything. So I could either use a pixel scanning method, which <laughs> got really complicated later on, or I could use a hotkey method. With a hotkey method I would just tap manually when I see the first hit circle and then the rest of them would use that first tap as reference so that they can continue the chain properly. In my case the key E is one of the two keys that I use to tap in also, so I can just use that as a hotkey to stall the code so that it only runs after I hit it. This is the hit meter. It basically shows you if you hit too early or too late. On the left is too early, on the right is too late. Unlike other games also has precise gameplay. This means that if you don't press very accurately in a specific hit window, you're gonna get less accuracy and you're gonna get a 50 or a 100. So if I press my hotkey too early, the entire sequence is gonna run too early and it's gonna look something like this, which obviously looks ridiculous. Except for this one inexplicable instance where the script just fixes itself randomly. I think my code became sentient. I mean, it's not the first time an also script takes over my PC. Stop it! Yeah, I kind of lost the plot there a bit, and so far I've only been explaining the basics of the game, so let's get into actually testing and making the script itself. So for now my goal is to just make a script that will tap for me even if it's really bad. So welcome to the first version of the script, even though it's only 20 lines of code it actually works. First I need to manually copy and paste the plain text of the map data into a string, then I import it and then I let my parser take care of it. Although it doesn't know what sliders are yet, it can only do circles. Then there's a very basic left click function which will click on the circles themselves, and then I use the hotkey method that I talked about earlier to stall the code, and then it starts clicking on all of them. And you know, it keeps clicking even when I'm on my desktop because it doesn't know when I'm in-game or not until I terminate the script manually. Now you might be wondering why I'm using absolute time instead of just taking the delays from the bitmap file and then just going time.sleep because I already have the value in milliseconds. The problem with waiting for every single delay is that time.sleep is not perfectly accurate. And even though the individual inaccuracy isn't that bad because I'm doing it hundreds or thousands of times, it really adds up. So what I could do is add an offset that makes it not drift off as badly every single time. The problem is that the offset has to be a fixed value and the delay is gonna be different every single time, so the offset is gonna be inaccurate as well. This kinda lowers the problem, but it doesn't fix it. I'm also gonna need to add a lot of randomization and complicated features, so the UR chart would end up looking like this eventually. Now in comparison, this is what absolute time looks like. I'm gonna be using the Unix time. This means that instead of sleeping multiple times and adding extra delay every single time, it's more like fitting the circle into a timeline, so even though there's a bit of delay every now and then, it doesn't add on to the next hit's delay and grow exponentially. I f***ing hate animating, man. But we have a bit of an issue, it doesn't know how to do sliders. All it has to do is press, hold and drag it along. But it doesn't know how to hold, it just presses. In fact, it doesn't even distinguish between circles and sliders. So while it can do streams very nicely, I need to fix the slider situation. But getting the hold time for the sliders is not as easy as getting the delays from the map file. Sliders can have a different velocity, meaning that even though they're the same size, some of them can move a lot faster. I need to find the slider velocity in the timing points and then apply a custom formula based on the slider length to figure out for how long I need to hold 
sold it. So that's exactly what I did. I reworked the parser and I added a custom formula and now it works perfectly. This will calculate the slider hold time. This is the new parser that will check for sliders as well. And now this is how I implemented it into the clicking so that if it is a slider, it will hold it down instead of just pressing it. I didn't mind it during the initial testing, but now that I want to play different maps and I have to load every single one of them manually every time from the songs folder, it's getting a bit unbearable. So I'm going to need to make an automatic map. Bruh, I was so close to doing it in one take. So I need to make an automatic map. <laughs> so I need something that will automatically pull the map data every time I play it. And I'm gonna be implementing the method that I explained in the beginning of the video. So now I just run the script, I find the map, I press space, I open the map, and now it works. I did not have to play the entire map though. But I mean... But now we have a bit of a situation. My script only left clicks. Normal also players don't play by clicking the mouse, let alone only one button. They usually use their mouse to aim and then they use a keyboard to tap. But they don't only tap one button either, they alternate between two buttons and go left, right, left, right. So I need to make it tap and also alternate between keys. But before that I want to put everything in a class because I don't want to start using global variables and the project is getting a bit complex, so I'm gonna go that route. I just need to replace my click function with a key function, I would have the keys alternating between W and E, and then I would call that alternating key in my click function. And it was about time I made a check if I was in-game or not so it wouldn't break my entire PC every time I would alt tab. Also, a lot of players single tap meaning that they only press one key when the bpm is low so they don't have to press too many per second and then when the map speeds up and they have to tap a lot faster they switch to alternating so basically now you have a bpm threshold where it will single tap on low bpm and double tap on high bpm it uses the circle delay to calculate this so it gets the map data automatically it alternates look at how amazing that score meter looks and it even does the slider it's like pretty much perfect but then i tried the tech map It wasn't really working for many reasons, but the main one was that I didn't use threading, so I implemented that, and then a couple of extra hundred lines of code, and I kind of reworked <sighs> most of the script then. Hey, it works now. So now I can play stream maps like I'm the unemployment final boss. Speaking of employment and programming, after I made this video about how to get into the basics of programming, a lot of people asked me for more courses and advanced ways to get actual jobs. A really good in-demand position for Python is being a data analyst, and luckily Coursera has exactly what you need for that. Coursera has been the standard for courses and learning for a really long time now, and they have some amazing courses on everything tech and programming related. Many people struggle with getting a tech job because it's very oversaturated and the market it's really tough right now. But one thing that pretty much every industry has in common is having a lot of data and needing to go through it, so data analysts are in high demand. Coursera offers data analytics professional certificates from Google, Meta, Microsoft, and IBM, helping those willing to learn and progress their careers at every level, ranging from complete beginners to skilled workers looking to upskill. These courses have many practical hands-on elements with industry technology like Python, SQL, Excel, Tableau, which will prepare you for your future career and make you much more employable. Even if you prefer other fields, Coursera has something for everyone, which is why I'm glad that they sponsored this video. You can get 40% off for 3 months of Coursera Plus with the link in the description. Well, good thing it's not missing anymore, because if it missed even once, I would have a huge problem and I would need to redesign the entire script. I said, God help me. And so 15 hours and 700 lines of code later, it works. Basically, I changed the whole input system and hit logic and I made it more consistent. But if you thought those were the cool features, you just got scammed by the basic features. So after adding some very complicated stuff and remaking the entire script, I got the basics down to the point where it works absolutely perfectly. But that's just the basic boring core of the script. Now it's time to add some quality of life features and much cooler stuff. Oh yay, my mouse is doing the cool thing again, let's go. And you broke it, now you have to subscribe. Now while the cool features are really cool and useful, implementing them makes me wish I never started programming, I'm not gonna lie, this shit is really painful. But let's get into it regardless. But the code is getting pretty big and complicated, so I'm gonna focus more on the functionality and implementation rather than going through the lines of code themselves. First thing I wanted to do is to be able to restart. I'm still running on the hotkey method, which means that if I press it at the wrong time, I cannot play the map, so I have to restart everything, tab out, restart my script, reload the map, and it's just very annoying. And then if I do it again, I have to restart again woohoo i made my restart key the same as the in-game map restart key so now when i press it it restarts the map and it restarts my script as well with the whole map loaded in so it's so much more convenient normies call it backtick gentlemen call it tilde and some people call it the key under the cup wait he spelled it wrong <laughs> Mm 
<laughs> oh my god, the mouse is doing the thing again. No! So I get the wrong timing here, so it starts hitting too late. Then I just restart and everything is completely fine. Look how convenient that is. I changed my get my path key from space to enter because when you press also... Bro, what the f Because when you press enter in also, it starts the map. So that way I can start both the map and the get mapper at the same time without pressing two keys. And now it's time for the two biggest features I've added yet. Hit scanning and pixel scanning. This entire script up until this point took me a day to make. And these took me one day each to try to get working. So we have hit scanning. It's one of the most important features of Relax and pretty much the hardest one to program. This is my script without hit scanning. Let's say I'm playing a more difficult map and this is one of many circles. It's not unlikely that I'm going to be a little bit late on it. The problem when when playing without hit scanning is that right now it's gonna wait for the perfect time to press it which is right here and as you can see immediately as it was time to press it it pressed it even though my mouse wasn't on top of the circle this means that even if i hit it a bit late it's completely over it's not gonna try to press that same note again not only does this make it really obvious that it's a program playing but it also makes it really hard to play now it hit scanning in the exact same scenario even though i flick on it way too late it still hits it here it recognizes that it's not on top of the hit circle, so it's gonna wait until it gets on there, and in the first frame that it's on it, it presses the key. This is extremely important because the people that play with Relax intentionally hit notes a bit later. People that play without Relax try to snap their mouse onto the hit circle and then give themselves as much time as they can for tapping before they press and then they move on, so basically it's a lot slower. The difference in that speed and habit of hitting late is what allows Relax players to do stuff like this. because they can play the game much faster. I could also check if the cursor is about to leave the circle too soon, so it would tap early rather than missing it entirely. But I am not spending two hours programming that for a five second YouTube clip. This is the main file hit scanning code, and I also have a bunch of extra utility files with a couple hundred lines of code. So let's talk about the pixel scanner. As I said, I'm using a hotkey method, which isn't optimal because it's semi-manual, I can make mistakes, I have to restart, and it's not precise every single time. Basically, the goal is to take the first hit object, see where it would land on the screen, and then prepare to scan those coordinates. I would open a map, wait for the screen to turn fully black, and then scan the center pixel of the first hit object. The second it's not fully black anymore, it means that there's an object there and I can start the whole map sequence. I just need to wait for the approach rate and then everything is fine. That way I don't have to manually time it by pressing it every single time at the right timing and then if I mess it up I have to restart. This was my original pixel scanner and this is the one that I over optimized and that leads me to my next point. It would not work for 1440p, it just refused to cooperate. My hit scanning would also completely mess up the map and just not work properly. The first thing that came to mind is that 2K just has more pixels, so it's a bit too slow. But then I tried six different Python libraries and I over-optimized every single one of them like crazy and I just could not get it to work. Then I ran a system-wide test with multiple libraries and I was getting impeccable frame times. Basically it wasn't the pixel count or my code. And same with the hit scanning, I thought maybe I just had bad code or it was badly optimized, I tried adding offsets and all sorts of stuff. But the code logic and optimization was fine. So then I ran some more tests and I wanted to see what the pixel scanner was seeing. It got to black and then it saw it in the first few milliseconds, it saw it almost immediately, so it wasn't a scanning issue. And most importantly, it's not like it had a delay, but sometimes it worked perfectly and other times it didn't work at all. Even if it saw the change instantly, it started the sequence way off. So what I assumed was that maybe it was an app specific issue. Basically I thought my scanner couldn't see into also properly, even though it wasn't on full screen. Maybe there was some sort of buffering or lag or stalling from the app itself. It took me 10 seconds to explain that but it was a solid five hours of testing. <laughs> I also tried tons of obscure Windows technologies also settings, and drive and and settings control like panel. I it was the pixel formula. <sighs> it was scanning the wrong pixel. The last time I got rage baited this hard was when I spent an entire month making an anime video just for it to get 15k views. So the hit object coordinates are not actually screen coordinates, they're also coordinates which fit inside of display area. I had the correct formula for 1080p, but I had the wrong one for 1440p. Now I know what you're thinking. How did it even make it to live servers? I did test it, and originally I wanted to see where it was scanning, so I made it move my cursor on top of where it was scanning so I could confirm visually that it's scanning the right pixel. The problem is that I had some acceleration features and Win32 API kind of trips out on full screen applications. So then I calibrated the formula with the wrong offset and it was completely unusable. Although in my mouse testing it looked perfect. And then I tried to draw a canvas on top of the screen and have it draw out exactly where it's scanning. And that's how I found out. Sparkasa. 
having the wrong coordinate system also means that I'm getting the wrong circle positions on the screen, which is why my hit scanning kept breaking. The thing is that I triple checked my coordinates, it's just that the checking method was invalid because I was moving my mouse instead of projecting it on a canvas. So it's not like I didn't check this many times. But then I realized that everything would be fixed when I got the right formula. And after years of abuse, the clankers finally had their revenge on me. Because I didn't want to deal with complicated math, I asked Warp to make an entire script for me which would calibrate my screen coordinates with the also coordinates and calculate everything and give me the offsets. The downside was that I had to take 60 different positions just to make sure that it was high accurate and those were down to the pixel. This failed with ChatGPT and Claude before so I tried it with Warp because it's the best one so if it didn't work with this one either I was doomed. So this whole process took me a solid half an hour just for it to give me the wrong formula. And at that point I said, you know what, I'm done with this. And then, you know what, I'm not in the mood to get copyrighted, you get the joke. Basically I just did the Romanian way and I did trial and error until it was basically good enough. My hit scanning was still not working and that was because I had the wrong sensitivity in game. But then I fixed everything and it was all finally working perfectly. Fully automatic, consistent pixel scan method, no issue, hit scanning, it was perfect. Now I also want to make it aim. This might sound complicated, but because I have everything else in place, all I have to do is tell it to move the cursor where the circle is about to appear. And that's it. It's really cool, the only downside is that it has no idea how to do spinners or sliders, because I only taught it how to click on circles, but oh well, it's good enough. But can I actually play with it? Well... And then we have stream maps. I could also add humanization and randomization and that sort of stuff, but I don't really want to do that in a public video and encourage people to cheat, so I'm just gonna use the blatant settings for now. I could also make it work with mods if I wanted to, with my flashlight method, but I don't feel like doing it. So in conclusion, get forum to play this map before I crash out, especially the first section. Share the video so it doesn't flop and I get fisted by my sponsor. But yeah, now that you made it this far, you're one of the cool people.